What's going on everybody? In this quick video, we're gonna talk about the CME Fed Watch tool, the current expectations of cuts. Right now it's actually a 50-50. We're also gonna talk about what the spot ETF saw on Friday. And we're gonna talk about a huge pattern for Bitcoin, but let's get started. This will be a quicker video. Bitcoin was pretty strong last week. It's trying to keep its gains over this weekend. We'll see how it starts on Monday. And of course we do have the Fed meeting and it is going to be on Tuesday and Wednesday, the results, the actual uh, report of what cut we're gonna get is going to be on the Wednesday. Now I wanna show you guys something. This is the global money supply. And when there's rough patches in the economy, when we're in trouble, the Fed will print money. Other countries will print money. And this M2 money supply will continue to grow. And you can see that it's highly correlated with Bitcoin, or I should say Bitcoin's highly correlated with it. But you'll see that when money spikes, global M2, when it spikes, typically you see Bitcoin spike. When it's running up, typically M2 is running up. When M2 is dropping, Bitcoin is pulling back. I mean, there is definitely a correlation. And if you follow the four year cycle, I do really think Bitcoin completely follows the four year cycle and M2 uh, global supply. Those are two of the biggest factors for Bitcoin. I've said that before. I do think that is, uh, you know, that's what it chalks up to in the end is money supply and the four year cycle, the halving cycle. But basically, the Fed is getting towards easing, lowering rates making money easier to come by again. Companies that want to acquire debt will do so at a lower interest rate as the Fed lowers rates. And right now we're neck and neck between a 50 basis point cut and a 25 basis point cut. Now I've said that I think it's a good idea for the Fed to start small and just be consistent with it. Don't spook the market and start with a 0.5 cut. But right now the market thinks it's a 50-50 chance. We'll see how it ends up on Wednesday. I heard there was a leak that it's going to be a 50 basis point cut. I'm not sure about that. It might just be a rumor. I was looking for an article covering that or something. Couldn't find anything. Uh, but I do think it's going to be a 25 basis point cut. To me, that's the logical decision. Start small. Don't scare the economy. Don't scare the stock market. Although the Fed doesn't really care as much about the stock market. We are going to be looking at a cut one way or another. It should be a very interesting week next week. Now, I also want to talk about what we saw on the spot Bitcoin ETFs on Friday. It was a really good day, actually and spot ETFs saw $263 million inflow. And this is the largest single day since around July. Now here's something interesting and it's a new theme that's been going on is iBit has been posting either no flows. There was actually a couple of days where they posted outflows, which isn't the norm. It has been underperforming in terms of inflows versus the others lately. But that's also likely from it doing so well since launch of the ETFs. I mean, there's like $20 billion in assets under management and it started from nothing. So there are gonna be points of profit taking, times that people are like, okay, I'm up massively, I'm gonna trim a little bit off the table, take some profits, get ready for the end of the year tax season. But basically just keep an eye on IBIT. We wanna see those inflows returning back. And we wanna to continue to see that GBTC's outflows are getting smaller and smaller. But days like this are great, continuing to see inflows, net inflows into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. I do think Bitcoin is right on the verge of breaking out and trying to test those all time highs. But first we have to hold over 60,000 and we do have some levels to break first. Now I'll leave this down below for you guys, but this article is saying a ticking time bomb, 150,000 by 2025. Now I don't know about that by 2025, but can we see that by the end of the cycle? I do think it's possible. Uh, but this article basically cites a cup and handle pattern. I'll show that to you guys. It's basically saying that once Bitcoin can break above its previous resistance this basically neckline on this cup and handle that we're forming i'll show you on the actual chart uh, but once we can break that this analyst thinks that bitcoin can target 110 to 130,000 in early 2025 call me crazy but this article i look i just looked over it and i couldn't find anything about 150,000. i think the writer of this article mentions that it could make an explosive move to 100 to 150,000, maybe because 130 is like the middle point of that I don't know. I don't know who's calling for 150,000. Maybe it's this article writer, but the article writer thinks that this could bring an explosive move to 100 to 150,000. The the analyst the article talks about thinks it could go to 110 to 130,000. A little inconsistent, I guess. Uh, but let's look at Bitcoin's chart. I'll give you what I think. Now, here's the uh, cup and handle that they're talking about. Here's the cup. Here's the handle. Once we get a break first out of this descending resistance, I do think that'll bring a reaction. But you know, we have to break this previous line here, the previous neckline that they're talking about. First off, the old peak, we have to hold that 69,000, and then we have to break our 74,000. But once we break all time high, that's when I think we will go parabolic. There might be a retest, there might be a little pullback after a break of all time high. Uh, but based on where we are in the cycle, I do think we're about to go parabolic. Q4 of the halving years has always seen a good run. We get towards that supply shock, and as a side note, 
Bitcoin supply on exchanges as at lows we haven't seen since 2018. So I do suspect that there will be a supply shock just like we've seen every cycle. But you know, this is a massive pattern and the larger the time frame, the larger the pattern, sometimes the larger the breakout as well. And honestly, I don't think it's insane to say that Bitcoin could get to like 150 uh, by the end of the peak. By 2025, I don't know about that. That might be a little too optimistic by the end of this year can we test all-time highs break out maybe get into the 80,000s? i do think so will we get to 150,000? i don't think so i don't think so by the end of this year maybe by peak but all i know is i'm going to be trimming taking profits selling covered calls throughout 2025 not just waiting for a certain point not just waiting for a certain price target i know a lot of people ask me like what my price targets are I'm more focused on timeline. I'm more focused on chart structure. It doesn't matter to me what the price is. It matters what the chart is telling me. It matters where we are in the timelines of the halvings. But I do personally think we will at the very bare minimum, worst case scenario, we will test our all time high for Bitcoin by the end of this year. And who knows, maybe this cup and handle does play out. We get a beautiful breakout and we start going parabolic to end the year like we have seen in pretty much every previous cycle. It wouldn't be surprising. Maybe a run towards six figures to top this year off. That would be fantastic to see. But zooming back in a little bit, you'll see this inverse head and shoulders. We are still reacting to it. We need to break over the 60,000 and hold it. Also, what we need to do is we need to break over the 50 MA. It is a resistance and we are close to it. We are very close to it. We just got to get back over that 60,500. Reclaim that 50 MA. But you know, we had a beautiful inverse head and shoulders last time. Not that long ago and the market did definitely react to it. Uh, so I'm hoping that the market is already reacting to it, but I am hoping it continues it out, continues to run. We got to face these previous resistances, the 65,000, uh, then 70,000, of course, and then the 74,000 all time high. But there's this current inverse head and shoulders we're working on. And then here's a previous one, inverse head and shoulders. You got that middle point, the two shoulders, and then we saw a beautiful reaction uh, from the shoulder, we saw roughly 17%, give or take. Uh, from this shoulder, 17% would take us to test this previous high, probably, the 65-ish, 64-ish thousand. It's going to be important next week to break the 50 MA and hold over it, and specifically 60,000. Can we maintain 60,000 and start taking out previous levels, taking out our previous all-time high of 69,000, and then taking out our other you know, recent all time high, this cycle of 74,000. Let me bring it back to this screen. You know, we are going to see M2 global supply continue to grow and this will push Bitcoin's price up. People are leaving other currencies that are inflationary and trying to get into something like Bitcoin that has a set amount of Bitcoin that every four years, the incoming supply of Bitcoin gets cut in half. This causes a supply crunch and we do always see a rally that is based around the halving cycles. And I do expect this to continue for the foreseeable future. In the end, it's all chalked up to supply and demand. That to me is one of the biggest mechanics in uh, anything in terms of investment products. There's nothing that I know of that gets the supply, the incoming supply cut in half every four years. And you guys know my thoughts on people that compare Bitcoin to tulip mania. Those people definitely have a lot more research on Bitcoin to do. But what do you guys think about this week? What do you think the Fed's going to give us? Are they going to start with a 50 basis point cut or a 25 basis point cut? Is Bitcoin going to test its previous all time highs by the end of this year? Is Bitcoin going to break six figures by the end of this year? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Hopefully you're having a good weekend. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next time.